بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم dear brothers and sisters everywhere السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته today إن شاء الله we're gonna resume our reflections on سورة مريم and الحمد لله رب العالمين last week we have concluded the story of Prophet Isa صلى الله عليه وسلم his birth and his origin and the conversation or the encounter that went before uh, his mother uh, Mary and her family, her people, and what Prophet Isa وسلم, taught his people about the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the nature of himself, and about the, uh, 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 about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to beget any, uh, any son, and that he was only a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a prophet that was sent by him to guide people to the right path. Then, after this story, after this account, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah gives us another account. It's uh, an account of the story of Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the father of all uh, prophets. Uh, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell his people, to tell us, to tell the Muslims, his, the followers of Prophet Muhammad about uh, Prophet Isa, Prophet uh, Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim and what happened between him and his father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ and mention in the book Ibrahim uh, so Allah tells Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to mention to his people to recite to his people uh, uh, who were worshipping idols to tell them about the story of Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what happened with, uh, uh, with him. And Prophet Ibrahim is known to be the intimate friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Khalil uh, uh, of the uh, most beneficent or most uh, gracious subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Arabs, the Arabs, those uh, idol worshippers, they 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 are the descendants of Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they used to claim or they claim to follow his uh, religion. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is commanding Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to inform them that he was a truthful prophet. He was a truthful prophet. So tell them about what took place with his father and how he forbade him from worshiping idols, so that you should follow suit if you claim to be his followers you should follow suit you should follow him in doing this as well not to worship the idols as he forbade his uh, his father and his community his people uh, from worshiping the uh, the idols وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صُدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا he certainly was a man of truth and a prophet he certainly was a man of truth and a prophet. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as being a man of truth and a prophet. And the word Siddiq, innahu kana Siddiqan, Siddiq, it, is, it can be translated as a man of truth. But it has a wider sense, wider meaning than merely being truthful. As it, uh, it denotes and it connotes that uh, he was always truthful and a firm believer in the truth. So what happened between him and his father? When he said to his father, Oh my father. When he said to his, fa his father, Oh my father. Ya abati. لِمَ تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبَصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا Why do you worship that which hears not, sees not, and cannot avail you in anything? These idols, these idols which you worship, these idols will not benefit you. They will not protect you from any harm. Uh, and here, as you can see, the using, the using or the use of the word abati, the way Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addresses his unbeliever and disbeliever and unfaithful father was a very, very passionate way. A very loving uh, way and uh, 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 concerned way. So, with this passionate appeal that Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alaihi wasallam addresses his uh, father, he is trying to guide him to the straight path, to the right path, to the correct path. He is trying to save him from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa taala in this present life and in the hereafter, the day of distress, as we learned last week. 
So his appeal, the appeal of Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, to his father was that of a loving son, one who cares about his uh, uh, his father and his community. He wants to save them. And we, we, we understand this from Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he said, مثلي ومثلو, مثلي ومثلكم, uh, uh, the likeness of the likeness of uh, myself and you is of a man who uh, uh, lit a fire and butterflies uh, started to uh, come closer to that fire as if they were, you know, uh, 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 about to fall into that fire and get burned. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was like that man who uh, is trying to protect them and prevent them from falling into that fire. And this is the mission, this is the task, and this is the mission of all the prophets and the messengers to save people from the wrath and the anger and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when, when, when man, when man uh, worships the idols, man is defying all logic and defying all sense. Because the normal practice is that people address their uh, worship to someone who is more exalted, more knowledgeable, and stronger than man. How is it then that in this case, in the case of the idol worshippers, that they, they go below the level of man and even below the level of, uh, of uh, animals, something that doesn't hear or see anything, something that cannot cause uh, that can cause no harm or or benefit, and that was the case. That was the case of Ibrahim's father, Prophet Ibrahim's father, and his community, and that was the case of the uh, uh, worshippers, the uh, the the Arabs who the Arabs who worshipped the uh, idols during the lifetime uh, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, Prophet Ibrahim here is. Uh, Clarifying the fact, the fact uh, is clarifying the fact about those idols and that they cannot benefit and they cannot uh, uh, cause harm to any uh, to anyone. And then he says, "Ya abati, ya abati, inni qarija ani min al ilmi ma lam yatika." O my father, verily. There has come to me the knowledge of that which came not unto you. I know some things. I know things that you don't know. I know things that you don't have any access to. Because, because Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, received the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the revelation brought him with true knowledge. Uh, 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 and that true knowledge set him on the uh, path of guidance, the straight path, the path of guidance. So... And Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, though he was uh, younger for sure, he was certainly younger and less experienced than his uh, father. But he had been bestowed, he had been bestowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a clear recognition of that truth. He, and, and that's why he gives his advice to his father who hadn't received such uh, knowledge. So, as if Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, telling his father or saying to his father that even though I am from your lines, even though I am your son, and you see me as inferior to you because I am your son, know that I have received knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you do not know and it hasn't reached you. Upon that, فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيَّةً So, follow me. You have to follow me. Because I know things that you know nothing about. I have received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have received nothing. So, you have to follow me. فَاتَّبِعْنِي So, follow me. أَهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيَّةً I will guide you to the straight path. So, he wanted his father to follow suit. So that he would be on the path of truth. And there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with a father following his son when this son has a direct recourse to a higher source able to give true guidance. And here in this case, Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, in his capacity as a prophet, in his capacity as a messenger, he received the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he received from him knowledge that wasn't given to anyone else during his time, especially his father and his community. 
That's why they should they should have followed him. يا أبتي لا تعبد الشيطان. Oh my father, worship not Shaitan. Don't worship Satan. Don't obey him by worshiping these idols. So here he invites, because Shaitan here, Satan, invites to this idolatry, and he is pleased with it. So here Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim makes it clear that the way followed by his father is that of Satan. His aim is to guide his father to the way acceptable to Allah. And the way to the way that with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. Inna shaytana kana lirrahmani asiyya. Verily, shaytan, Satan, has been a rebel against the most gracious, against the most beneficent, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaytan, Satan, was obstinate. And he was too arrogant to obey his Lord. As he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and refused to make prostrate to prostrate himself in front of Adam when he was commanded to do so uh, while he was with the angels in in paradise in Jannah, and uh, and and that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala expelled him and made him an outcast. So here, Prophet Ibrahim is telling his father, is advising his father, don't follow him, or you will become like him. You will become an expelled. You will, you, you're going to be expelled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you an outcast as he did with Satan himself. Ya abati. Ya abati inni akhafu ayya masaka adabun min ar-Rahman. O my father. Verily, I fear lest the torment from the most gracious should overtake you. Because of, uh, because of your associating others and partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your disobedience in what I am commanding you with. I am, the, I am a prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with clear guidance and you have to follow me. If you want to be saved from hellfire, you have to follow me. فَتَكُونَ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَّ So that you become a companion of shaitan. There will be no one who will protect you or help you or assist you except a please. However, neither he nor anyone else has any power over the outcome of matters. Following him will only cause you to be surrounded by the torment and punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of, in this present life and on the day of uh, resurrection. Satan, or the devil, is the one who tempts people to worship idols. And this means that whoever worships idols is in the same position as one who worships the devil himself. But here, what about the response of Ibrahim's father? What, what about the response of the father of Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, قَالَ أَرَاغِبٌ أَنْتَ عَنْ آلِهَةِ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ Do you revile my gods, O Ibrahim? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of the reply of Ibrahim's father to his son. In reference to what he was calling him to. If you do not want to worship the idols, as if as if the father was telling Prophet Ibrahim that. If you do not want to worship the idols, and you are not pleased with them, then at least stop cursing, abusing, and reviling them. So now he is threatening him. He is threatening Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't desist, I will surely stone you. If you do not cease, if you do not stop, what are you doing? I will punish you, curse you, and revile you. Wahjurni maliya. So, get away from me, maliya. And maliya here means forever or for a long time. So, this means you should go away in peace and safety before you are afflicted with a punishment from me. So, here he is. Physically, he is physically threatening Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or he is verbally uh, uh, threatening him of uh, applying or afflicting him with a physical punishment which is stoning. Here, as we can see, the father's answer, the father's 
answer to that passionate appeal from Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, was the father's answer was harsh, arrogant, and threatening. To him, Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, and his rejection uh, of the idols was disrespectful. It was a crime for which Prophet Ibrahim وسلم, deserved a cruel uh, punishment, which is death by stoning. So he advised him to stay away or else punishment would be upcoming. As you can see, this is how the father's ignorance and cruelty replied to the son's passionate and polite appeal. No regard is given whatsoever for the son's care and concern for his father. This is how the disbelievers often or often reply to the advocates of faith. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all from among the advocates of faith. I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala and glory be his to make us from among those who listen to the statements and follow the best of them. Ameen. Until next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.